Okay, uh, so for today, we're going to be going over uh, the speaking section of uh, TOEFL from the uh, TOEFL, right, that we'll be taking a look at for today. And uh, so uh, the TOEFL, uh, the speaking TOEFL section has two parts, right? Uh, the speaking section uh, with topics based on topics that we have and also uh, based on lectures, right, that we have based on reading passages, right? And so uh, for today, right, uh, for the first section, we'll take a look at uh, speaking section based on different topics, right, that we have, agree or disagree, and then coming up with examples or details for the prompt that we have, right? And so we'll actually practice, we'll actually practice through uh, certain type of prompts uh, that we have, and so uh, we'll actually uh, brainstorm them, brainstorm them so that you can, uh, you can answer some of these questions that will be provided. And the first, uh, first uh, question that we have would be, uh, students should be allowed to bring. Uh, students should be allowed to bring. Uh, should be allowed to bring uh, cell phones into the classrooms that we have. So first prompt, and so again, uh, uh, again, students might be able to do research with these sort of uh, research with the cell phones, right? Or uh, look up things, look up definitions, look up vocabulary, right? Or even uh, sort of uh, chat with friends, right, for their research, and even right, uh, but. Uh, Facebook, uh, SNS, or Instagram, but but in a sense, right, it might be distracting at times, right? They might be doing a uh, 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 non school work on their cell phones, which could be really, uh, which could be distracting uh, from the school work that they might be involved with, and so therefore, this might be something that might be discouraged at times, right? So you might be able to have a balanced view of the different uh, sort of factors that cell phones uh, play a role in in the classroom, right? That we'll be able to take a look, right? The benefits, but also uh, sort of the drawbacks, right? That you'll be able to sort of balance through, right? That we'll be able to take a look. And then uh, the next prompt that we have uh, would be, uh, is it important to learn about other cultures or ignore them uh, completely, include examples and details in your response? And so, again, uh, the, uh, different cultures are really important and you might have pride for your own culture, right? Endocentrism would be one uh, sort of one culture, sort of preferred uh, extensively, but anyhow, uh, there's the global trend of uh, respecting other cultures, right? Cultures other than your own, right? Being uh, open-minded, sort of, uh, or uh, respectful of other cultures, right? Diversity is becoming an essential sort of part, especially in colleges as well, right? And so uh, the notion of uh, sort of uh, respect for the other cultures, right? Uh, by, uh, sort of diversity, right? Is becoming an important sort of uh, keyword, right? Important factor in uh, it is also in colleges as well. And so again, right? You could uh, think about, right? These factors, right? Being respectful of other cultures, right? Also in the mission committee, they uh, sort of try to include, include the, uh, to, uh, to adopt uh, inclusive policies, right? To, to have more cultures uh, invited to their own co uh, campuses, right? And so these factors may be uh, sort of in play, right? They might be able to take a look. Uh, and so once again, uh, coming up with these details, coming up with these examples would be essential when it comes to the speaking section, right? So you could you would actually draw a uh, map out, right? A uh, sort of uh, a brainstorm, uh, map out, right? Different factors, right? Examples, details, right? These uh, sort of uh, uh, factors in play, right? That we'll be able to take a look. And uh, uh, which of the factors is also important for a member of a team? And so we have leadership, cooperation, and patience. Leadership would be, uh, again, there are uh, different types of leadership that different people might be uh, sort of engaged with, right? But also uh, follower, leader, servant, leadership. So again, a lot of different factors to be in play, right? That we'll be able to sort of navigate. Um, and uh, so you might come up with different leaders that you aspire or people from your life or people from uh, history that uh, you aspire or you admire and write about their cases in terms of their leadership that uh, they have shown. Or cooperation might be another factor. So <clears throat> again, uh, teamwork always uh, involves right uh, working together, right team spirit, team teamwork, right. So how do we sort of engage with others, right? So that this would be essential. Another essential factor to play uh, to to keep in mind, right? To that will uh, to keep in mind right, when we think about cooperation, right? That we have also having patience, right? Patience would be uh, sort of having that sort of. 
patience for people right that we have right uh, patience for uh, people who might take time to follow through and so how do we involve uh, sort of people right in, in that sense right wait for those who might be uh, lagging behind in a certain sense right how do we involve them right patience might be another uh, factor that the leaders might be aspiring for right in order to uh, build a inclusive uh, team spirit right in a sense right that we might be building as well right that we'll be able to take a look and then again uh different again a lot of factors could be in play right especially when it comes to uh sort of uh, uh classroom activities we might gather information or ideas from many different people and try to uh sort of snowball this sort of idea right that we have uh, but the next example that we have would be uh, how do we catch up with current news uh, by watching television or by uh, reading newspapers? So do you prefer the paper version or do you actually prefer watching the TV? Right? So different uh, sort of uh, factors in play, again, preferences that we might have, right? And uh, once again, uh, there uh, 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 different age groups might have different preferences, right? The elderly might prefer uh, watching TV or, or newspapers, right? So we might have different preferences. Again, is it sports? Is it uh, academic? Is it uh, polit pol uh, political or economic, right? So different uh, or uh, sort of uh, social. So different, uh, uh, me uh, different topics. Uh, we might have preferences for different factors as well, TV or uh, newspapers. So depending on the topic as well, we might have preferences. Depending on the age, there might be preferences. So a lot of different factors to, uh, to consider. Right, you might be referring to your family members, your parents, or uh, people around you. Right, and how they uh, consume these media. Right, that you might be able to sort of write about. Uh, with this topic right that we have right and then uh the next response that we have would be uh the next topic uh that we have would be uh <coughs> friends are the most important uh sort of influence in our lives right uh but once again uh do you agree do you disagree uh, their parents, their teachers, uh, their friends, of course, and their colleagues. There are a lot of people around us, right, who we're influenced by, by, by even, uh, by even uh, students, right? And so who are we influenced by and how do we sort of maybe prioritize our influences from people? And so you could write about them, right? Uh, it could be historical figures you're influenced by, uh, by books, by medium, right? By TV, by newspapers, but... Uh, yeah, what is the spectrum of uh, influence that people have around us and how do friends uh, sort of influence us? We could uh, consider multiple factors, right? By figures, by media, right? We could also uh, sort of write about, right? Uh, uh, sort of inclusive, uh, sort of, uh, sort of uh, aspiring essay, right? Based on these factors uh, that, or people who influence us, right? That we could be writing about. And then, uh, uh, and siblings, of course, and then uh, the some people believe that universities should accept students based on their overall grade point average. Others believe that students should accept students based on their extracurricular activities, which they prefer. So, right, uh, GPA or extracurricular activities. Uh, so, <clears throat> once again, policies of different colleges or universities might vary. Right, that we might be able to be, we might we might know. Right, for instance. Uh, the uh, uh, if you're an aspiring scientist, you might have to have a certain type of score in the sciences, biology, physics, or chemistry, right? Uh, or even you might uh, uh, need uh, for your uh, sort of uh, top tier school, you might need the qualification in Olympia to be uh, to be uh, to be uh, to be qualified to be in your uh, dream school, right? In one of the elite universities, right? Uh, or if you're a sports, if you're an athlete, then uh, yeah, if you uh, are aspiring to be on their uh, table tennis team, then you might have to actually work yourself to uh, to play uh, sort of uh, uh, table tennis, right? And to be on the team, right? On the national team, for instance, right? So it really would vary in terms of how you get into a school, right? Uh, some some colleges they look at college essays. Some call some colleges they look at teacher recommendations. So a lot of different factors to consider when you're applying for different colleges. So once again, these are factors to uh, consider when we're applying for colleges, right? And so again, uh, multiple factors, right? It's a uh, it's a one packet sort of uh, process rather than uh, sort of one 
uh, tire thing, right, in a certain sense, right, that we'll be able to sort of consider. And then, uh, so multiple ways to be engaging in these, right, that we have. And then uh, <coughs> uh, the next uh, prompt would be, uh, some people spend their free time alone doing activities such as reading, thinking, or writing. Others spend their free time with people, engaging in group activities like sports, and which do you think is better, right? And so, uh, once again, uh, we come back to MBTI, right, in a certain sense. The eyes might uh, prefer, like, reading, writing, or reflecting, right, thinking, right? Whereas uh, the E's might uh, sort of prefer the uh, social activities or meeting with people, conversations, right? Uh, in a certain sense, different people have different balance of the I and E. Uh, reading might be a way to engage people. Writing might be a way to connect with people. Uh, whereas uh, some people, they, they converse with others and then come back and journal about their conversations or learn from those conversations uh, to reflect about them. And so we have different ways in which we interact with people and interact with the world. And so uh, how do we balance that? And also how do we sort of have preferences for that? How do we uh, sort of uh, respect uh, different people's ways of learning, right? Even uh, sort of uh, uh, the eight intelligence test uh, that we have. And so, again, uh, sort of uh, kinesthetic learners, those who learn through movement or dance, or auditory learners who learn from lectures or listening uh, to people. And so, again, uh, we could think of I and E and also balance of these factors, right, when it comes to learning and also different ways of learning. Uh, and also uh, of uh, education, that the pedagogy that the teachers could be aware of when they're uh, interacting with students, once again, right, that we could also be considering, right? So again, uh, multiple ways we could be engaging in these, right? Uh, multiple, uh, no sort of one uh, straight answer, but that it's really about uh, sort of how we engage with these sort of topics and how creative we can be, how to engage different examples, personal uh, personal experiences uh, from reading, from history, from historical figures, right? That we could all sort of combine, right? That we have. And then uh, students benefit from classes with a large number of students and they from uh, do from smaller classes. So again, another sort of uh, debatable sort of question that we have, but uh, in, in uh, sort of, uh, universities, they have professors who have large lecture rooms, right, uh, who have uh, sort of uh, 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 like the graduate students or TAs come in, they and they teach classes in a certain sense, right, and so uh, uh, with uh, 300 to 400 students in the whole like lecture room that we might have, whereas uh, with the liberal arts colleges, they have more one-to-one -one conversations with the professors, right, that we have. And so there might be advantages and disadvantages to both, right? Uh, some people say that getting feedback from uh, professors and also having like one-to-one -one, uh, office hour conversations with professors is something that they prefer over uh, 300, 400 students' lectures on economics, right, uh, that different professors sort of come up with, right? Uh, or even graduate students are teaching it. So again, different factors to uh, to consider when we're thinking about these factors, right, that we have. And then, and then, uh, that we have, and then, and then uh, we have, Couple more, couple more examples that we'll go through. Couple more. Couple more uh, examples that we have that we'll go through. Uh, reading books is the best way to learn, right? That we have. Reading books is the best way to learn. Reading books is the best way to learn. Once again, Okay, uh, so we'll uh, just continue with the smaller version. 
Uh, but reading books is the best way to learn. Uh, some people learn from lectures. Some people learn best from uh, the environment. Some people learn best from uh, from people, from uh, sort of going to bookstores or whatever it may be, right? And so once again, and some through dance, some through uh, video, some through uh, uh, sorry, uh, listening or hearing, uh, some through field trips. So again, different ways different people learn. And so we could be considering, right, the uh, sort of uh, different ways in which people learn. Of course, reading, right, through his, uh, history, through reading, uh, science, through reading, a lot of uh, factors through reading, but maybe uh, solving out the problems on your own for math, right? So there are different ways different people learn. And so, oh, again, uh, this might be a factor that you could also consider. Right, when it comes to uh, learning as well, right, that you'll be able to take a look. And then, uh, <clears throat> do you prefer to keep and collect items or throw them away and purchase new items every time? And so once again, uh, there might be times when you throw away things, right, in a certain sense, right? Whereas other times you might uh, buy new things, right? So do you prefer the familiar or do you prefer the new? Do you actually uh, like the what you're used to, familiar, what, what you're familiar with, or do you uh, always buy new things? And so maybe for different scenarios, you might prefer different things, right? And so uh, you could be listing out the things that you keep, right? Listing out the things that you buy, right? And so how do you balance out the familiar with the new, right? Might be a, a factor that you could also be considering, right? That we have. And so again, uh, the the next section of the speaking section will be based on lectures and also reading passages that we'll be going over, right? So the first section will be based on prompts, based on uh, topics, right? Based on uh, sort of uh, themes, themes, right? That we have based on uh, questions, right? That we have, and so we'll have went through about uh, eight to ten different uh, examples right in class right that we'll uh, have been able to go through in the next section we'll go over the reading passages the lectures right and uh, come up with the speaking uh, examples right in the next video to come